figures, or were you really getting into the art and the story simultaneously? I was getting into the art and the story simultaneously. Like, yeah. I think the first character I created was named Icicle. Bicycle? Yeah. Icicle. Oh, Icicle. And he was like this little kid with ice powers, you know. But he wasn't Iceman. He wasn't Iceman, no. <laughs> no, he was a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a... Uh, do you ever feel of uh, the need to kind of like throw in uh, Iceman, or uh, sorry, Ice... Who's Icicle? Icicle. <laughs> Icicle. <laughs> What's like, will Icicle ever uh, come back in any way? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I I don't. I think I may have one drawing of him somewhere. Yeah. And I did one in art school. I was like, oh, let me draw Icicle. Nice. And so I drew him, and it was it was kind of fun. It was like updated, you know. But yeah. it was yeah, it was it was comics first. Yeah. yeah. And so you're you're young and you're into comics, and then when does. Uh, when is, is, is music the next interest? Yeah, yeah, the next thing that comes to me is music. Um, I'd gotten an acoustic guitar probably like around maybe the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And so I had taken a couple lessons, um, didn't really stick with them. But then just having that guitar in my life, later on I would come back to it. Yeah. And I remember when my parents bought me my first electric guitar, um, off of one of my friends, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was like kind of a Les Paul guitar. Yeah. Um, and so I just kind of started making out my own songs, and then I was, so so then it was that was my big thing. I wanted to be in a band, and so I was. Uh, I joined this band with a couple kids from school, and I got I got kicked out. Oh no! Was, what was their reason? I was really bad at guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you go back to making comic books? Yeah. I couldn't play. Um, they wanted to, I wanted to do original songs, and they wanted to do cover songs. Really? What kind of deal do you remember? What's yeah, they want, the, the reason I got kicked out is because I couldn't play Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought, oh, what am I going to do now? That was my big plan. I was going to be in a band. So I was like, I guess I'm going to learn how to really write and draw comics. So then I spent a whole summer like tracing uh, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Woo! like, Woo! you know, uh, Tom McFarlane, like just yeah. tracing it all. Yeah. And then eventually, uh, after that summer, I stopped be I stopped needing to trace, and I was able to then kind of slowly develop my own style. So in a way, you wouldn't play covers in that band, but then right. you were essentially using that whole summer to do yeah, covers doing, of comic books. I was doing covers yeah, yeah. of <laughs> comics. Um, but it was really like to learn how to draw, and I, I, you know, I think that's a valid way to kind of learn is by imitating others. And yeah, because it's it's almost just uh, like this, the, the you know physical memory of like moves yeah. and whatnot. And yeah, shapes. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, how do you get that shape? How do you get that line? Um, and then uh, so then it became more automatic. So that was then my focus because I was like, well, I didn't, I wasn't able to pull off the band thing. Yeah. So I guess I'll be a comic creator. You know, and there's still a lot of time before that worked out for him. Yeah, um, yeah, there is. But but it's is it a thing? Because I know sometimes when I'm I say I'm like writing, I got to get a script in, um, and I kind of just get tired right. or just a little bit fatigued of that process. Yeah, and then I I like that I can go and play drums or go and pick up a guitar. Right, and, right. And was that still kind of happening? Not yet. No, it not yet. It wasn't until like later in my life. That you were able to just go. Kind of go back and forth. Yeah. So you had a laser focus of the, in this time. Yeah, because I had already felt that I had failed in music. You thought that was it. <laughs> so then my fallback was comic artist. Yeah. So not even you for know. the joy of playing music. Because you like, so was there a bit of like, you're like, if, if, if the music thing isn't going to be my, my main deal in my yeah. life, yeah. I don't want to do it at all. Kind of at the time, but I was also like 15, 14. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um. Which is like, that's the kind of thing that you would do with that. You're, you're like, it's like, no, I'm done with that. Such yeah, childish things. It's so yeah. just music. I'm, I'm going to create comics. Yeah, I was like, I'm not good enough. Yeah. So, um. So then, um. What? So then, you know, that led to me writing my first comic at 15. Um. And getting published. And that was a really cool experience. How. And is there. That, that was ins that, that must have been insane. Did yeah. you did you know other people your age doing comic books? Yes, um, the artist of the series yeah. was uh, a year older than me in high school. I think I was a sophomore and he was a junior, and he was the best artist I'd ever seen. Wow. Like I thought he was better than like professionals. Yeah, and his name was Jose Santos, and he was phenomenal, and we became friends, um, and then we started making comics together. 
And then he was the artist at like 16 years old. He was a published, I think I was 15 and he was 16. That's crazy. And then, so in a way you kind of put together another band. Like another, kind like, of, it's like, yeah. a, like at least like a, a collaboration or in some kind of a scene. Yeah, and then one of my friends from, so right around this period I discovered this comic shop and it became a really big important part of my life. Mm. And at that comic shop I met our inker, Dana Green, who was an, who was an art teacher in wow. East Orange, I think. Um, he became the inker of the book. So, um, so then we did that for a couple issues and I think we just kind of, I don't know if it was that we got bored of it or, um, but we, I guess we felt we, we had accomplished something, so like, let's move on to other stuff. You know? Yeah. There's only two issues of it. There's only two issues, and you, at the time you felt like, you're like, we did it. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of, you know, I didn't, I, I've always struggled with like sticking with things. Yeah. <laughs> so. And so, um, you do the two issues, you, you know, like, and I'm sure at that time, was it also kind of, were you hanging out with these guys as well? Like, was it, was it, was it Oh yeah, we, me and Jose lived like three blocks from each other. Nice. So we were together all the time working on new stuff. So being, like, being creative and, like, within, uh, like, a friendship. Yeah. Which I felt like was very important to me when I was growing up. Right. Just having friends that, like, making little sketches mm -hmm. or, you know, making bands, making fake bands yeah, for, like, yeah, a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that's the way we hung out. Yeah, that's how I like to hang out. Yeah. Well, almost all of my friends, I ended up creating projects with and yeah. that was fun we would hang out in my mother's kitchen and sit on at the kitchen table and just and then I, I got a whiteboard really young too and we put a whiteboard up in the kitchen and oh. we would, like <laughs> just turned it into the writer's room yeah yeah that's what we did and um, and then I used those comics to get into the School of Visual Arts in New York yeah so that helped me get in at the time I, my drawing had gotten pretty decent too um, and I had an art class that went like three or four periods in high school. Whoa. My senior year was really cool. I was only in school for like that art class, one English class, and then I went and worked at the supermarket. Jeez. So I, I figured out all these ways to get out of school. Like, <laughs> I did work study and I did this really long art class. So yeah. I, were, you, were you a good student? I was okay, I was like kind of a C average, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but stuff like art, I would get like a B in. And yeah, and I would raise the, yeah, the GPA. Yeah, 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 but I was generally a C student. I only did the minimum of work to get me through high school. Yeah, same, same. Yeah. Yeah, just, it's a, and it's it, it's a thing too when you start to kind of, get, and this is not, uh, we're not saying this is what you should do if you're still in high school, <laughs> but like, it's like once I found, like, ways that I like to be uh, uh, express myself artistically I found myself being less interested in school in school politics yeah. like in school like the social scene because it's like you know once I get out of school I could go to a record store or a comic book shop or get together with my friends and actually make stuff yeah while everyone else was you know doing stupid stuff like homework yeah at a certain point in like math class and I had to take like the remedial math because I'm really bad at math same so I, I failed algebra twice and um then I finally passed in summer school and then they made me do geometry and I was like, all right, I've been here, I'm gonna fail yes. this and then I'm gonna have to go to summer school. So I asked them to put me in like really basic math where yeah. they really just showed you how to write checks. <laughs> Which is funny because if you're in basic math, you're probably not gonna be writing a lot of checks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 at least that's how I saw it. Yeah, you know, math was terrible. For Nothing me wrong with being great at basic math. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So like you're you're kind of you have your, this whole other world outside of high school. Yeah. That didn't like that didn't have anything to do with the people in high school. Right. And yeah, it was the comic shop. And another way that we were really creative together is we would play um, role playing games together. Oh, great. That was the big thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. D &D? What's that? Was it D and D? It was this? well, it was D and D at first in the third grade, and by the time I had become part of this group at the comic shop, we were playing everything from like GURP Supers to um, Call of Cthulhu. Um, you know, yeah. I'm trying to remember all. We we would constantly there would be like five games a week. Yeah. And then we would do these things called all nighters, where we would go to somebody's house and spend the night and stay the weekend, mm -hmm. and then um, we would just play all night. That's great. And I learned how to become a storyteller by being like a like a game master, like a dungeon master. Yes. Yeah, that is like a, such a great way to like learn to like to perform at all. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know some of the uh, best stand-ups I know are uh, grew up being dungeon masters. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Just a way to get a point across and, and mm -hmm. bring some emotion. And it to was it. it was really creative too because you would create your own worlds. And as a GM, I always like to have a partner. I always liked. I've always been really. Uh, I always really like having a collaborative partner. Yeah. I've always done really good with co collaborators. And so even with my my role playing games. I would have another player that was kind of the inside player yeah. that I wouldn't give special treatment to. In fact, they would have it hardest sometimes, but they were helping me tell the story. So we would sit there and brainstorm like, all right, what is this world, Yeah, all this. And they would kind of, that player would kind of help me keep everybody on track. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like cheating a little bit. I guess, <laughs> yeah. you know? But it's still fun because it's, it's supposed to be fun. fun. And it was all about the stories. And, yeah. you know, my friend Stu and I, we created this really amazing like, Star Wars universe. I mean, we played Star Wars, so it was, it was already an established universe, but we yeah. created this really amazing Star Wars game that took place in the future. Oh, was, really? Yeah, we played that through college. Oh, wow. Yeah, but, yeah we're still playing through college. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and I gotta know, like, it's um, at this time, are you, you know, are you going, are these friends, these groups of friends, are you also going out to see bands play? Are you going to see a yeah, person in the music? Yeah, or so one of my friends that I met in art school when we, we were in a comic book class together um, was named Sean Dillon. He, he ended up becoming a really amazing comic artist, but he was into stuff, like he, I was wearing, one of us was wearing a milk and cheese shirt, yeah. and so we realized we were kind of the outsiders in the class. Yeah. He, he would read hate, and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's how I met Ray Toro was through him because he was in a band with Ray Toro. Oh, yeah. So he was in this band with Ray Toro and I remember seeing Ray Toro play live and thinking this is the greatest guitar player ever. <laughs> yeah. You know. And so, and then that's like that's a huge thing. It's uh I like the idea of wearing, you know, shirts of like bands or things you like because yeah. it is essentially raising that flag for that moment. Like here it's like, you know, you see if everyone's kind of wearing stuff. Um, but like it's like when you're out and about and you see someone like you know wearing like a black flag or you gotta yeah, go oh yeah, okay yeah. there's like a little bit of you know I know a little bit about you yeah that see? stuff is helpful during those years yeah. you know um, for sure and that's how I met friends I remember John Rivera who wrote Cape Carson has a cybernetic <laughs> eye the way we met we were in a comedy writing class together in art school and he was wearing an Avengers shirt but not the comic book Avengers the old 60s British yes. spy show and that's how we started talking. So. And so, uh, so during this time, it's like you're you're taking in, you know, comic books are your focus, but yeah. you're still taking in all these other uh, forms of media that you're just a, you're a fan of. I'm a fan of it. I'm a fan of being creative. I'm a fan of working with people at this point. Yeah. You know. And then. Um, and have you still picked up that guitar? Every once in a while, because at that point, I had I actually had started this band with um, a couple of friends called Ray Gun Jones, mm -hmm. and that was during art school. Um, it was kind of Weezer-ish, yeah. maybe a little more, progressed a little in a different direction than that. Mm -hmm. So I had a Fender Stratocaster yeah. that yeah. I had asked my parents to buy me, and then we were playing in this band. And then I kind of, then I graduated art school, and then I really hit the pavement trying to get jobs in art. But it was, it was the period in comics after the big, uh, speculator boom yeah. in the 90s so comics were in a really bad place so people are just you know comic books were going from selling millions down to a lot lower and I know today they're even lower but yeah um, at the time the only way to get in was to be somebody established that would bring in numbers and that's kind of the way it still is unfortunately yeah. you know so I had unsuccessfully kind of I had done a couple of tryouts and things like that I got a page in one book um, and it wasn't that, I didn't feel like I had failed at that because then that led me to getting this job doing toy design. Okay. You know? Yeah. Where I could kind of hone my craft. And so... Yeah. And that's, a, that's like a, a job, like toy design is like a place where you can, you're can you employed, you're going in, yeah, it's, it's it was, a nine to five. Yeah, it was in Hoboken, it was called Fun House. Woo! And um, I would take, I would commute every day mm -hmm. and just go there and I'd get to draw all day and my art got so much better and I was learning how to do turnarounds of action figures. Oh, yeah. I was working on a lot of Marvel stuff. And that's a that's a real uh, earn while you learn kind yeah. of environment. And I got paid really well and that was right <clears throat> that was right when I started to pick up the guitar again. Oh because it's because you like relegated your creativity at work, uh, drawing and yeah. whatnot in that part of your brain mm -hmm. to those hours at work. Right, so then you right. get home and you're like, well, I've been drawing all day. I want to, you know, 
use a different part of my brain. Right. Different part of my creative brain. And I forgot, like, before the toy job, because that was when I was, like, settling, I had, uh, <clears throat> I was an intern on this show called Sheep in the Big City, which was a Mo Willems show. Oh, wow. Um, which is on Cartoon Network, and I was basically a photocopy boy. And I would just do that, and then I ended up pitching a show to the show's producer, and then I was in meetings with Cartoon Network for this Breakfast Monkey show I was working on. Wow. Yeah. So That's you just before the toy job. So you just had tons. You were like just kind of, you just had a creativity pounding out of you. Yeah, totally. In this way, and then um, and it was a it was it was drawing, it was pitching show ideas. Were you writing yeah. scripts? Uh, I was doing storyboard scripts. Yeah, storyboard scripts. You know? yeah. yeah, I was doing them like that. I would literally draw everything out for an animatic. Oh wow! And then we made an animatic, and Cartoon Network. Well, then 9/11 happened. So, like, the day I was supposed to go and prep for our big Cartoon Network meeting was the day 9/11 happened. Oh wow! And so then after that, nobody was coming to work. Yeah. I mean, to New York, and Cartoon Network was like, "Well, we're not going to be up there for a while." Yeah, you know, obviously. In you yeah. Know? Um, and then eventually they just passed on it because they had another food show called Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, oh. Which no which one I ever ended heard of. Up loving, you know? <laughs> oh, man. I used um, to watch that on the bus and just laugh for hours. <laughs> but was there a little bit of you going, this should have been mine? Not really, because it was so good. Yeah, that was I, so good. I was like, this is better than yeah. my show. Yeah. <laughs> but they were also so different. They're very different. Breakfast Monkey was a lot different. It was like this little magical flying monkey that talked like Bjork, so... <laughs> it was just different. It was a little more innocent. It wasn't an adult show, but it yeah. wasn't really a kid show either. Was there, was there a little bit inside you were like, I wonder if we could get Bjork in it to actually do yeah, the Yeah, I thought about it, but I got really good at doing Bjork's voice. Oh, can we hear some of it? <laughs> no! Just a little bit. No, 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 no. no. Just you can watch the animatic on YouTube and you can hear me doing Bjork's voice. Uh, so. um, and it was probably funnier than Dancer in the Dark. I have, I've not seen that, but I heard it's a really depressing It's made film. out of tears. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, so, so you're... So, 9-11 happens, I pick yeah. up the guitar again, yeah. and then I write Skylines and Turnstiles. <laughs> and then I call Otter, and then I call Ray, and then I get, I get Mikey, and then we just build this momentum. Wow, so this is like, this in... Was it just because you... What was the feeling of like putting comics aside? Was it just because you kind of got fulfilled? Uh, from the, the toy job, or was it just like this thing kind of, you just started feeling this other thing it, come out? It be, yeah, I was feeling this other thing, it became my therapy. Yeah. You know, from the, the PTSD that everybody had experienced from 9-11 and how to process that, and I'm also somebody who at the time, I believe I was maybe on Wellbutrin and I was dealing with depression. Mm -hmm. I've got like a chemical imbalance, that's yeah. kind of how my depression works, so I take medication to keep me balanced. Mm -hmm. Um, and it works for me. I know that doesn't work for everybody, but yeah. I'm a big proponent for it, you know. Um, and it's kept me really level for the last seven years. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. good to say. I know, I don't want to die anymore all the time. It's really, <laughs> it's really interesting. And so, uh, these songs just start coming out They just here. start coming out. And, and then you're getting all these guys that you kind of play with there. Anyone from the... Uh, the Sweet Home Alabama band? Did you no, call them? No, no, no. I, I heard they broke up. I don't. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Last I don't mention. know what happened to them. They were both really amazing players. I will say that. Yes, of course. They were cousins, and one was a drummer, and one was a bass player. Yeah. And they kind of really liked Zeppelin. And yeah. That, that was just their thing. That was their thing. It was their thing. And so, you, uh, like, did you, like, learn to prop? Because you said you were a bad guitar player. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, so when you started picking it up, you. Did you, did you, had you learned more, or just, was it just the doing of it that really kind of, or was it like having a lack of ability helping you? You know what it is, like, well, being a little naive about it actually helped, because I didn't fully understand chord structures yet. Yeah. So I would write something like, vampires will never hurt you, and... <laughs> and if you listen to the chords, and I'm doing a lot of weird stuff with like this finger being over here, and I'm picking it. Like, it's just whatever, you're just... I know the original chord for that song was like this. It was like, the hand was way yeah. down. Yeah. And um, so that helped. And then I was, regardless of what kind of skill I had at the guitar, I was always able to write songs. Yeah. So even back in my art school band, I was writing the songs. Um, the, uh, the, the the monkey cartoon, was. were there going to be songs in that as well? Yeah, there was, and I wrote one. Actually, my first collaboration with Ray Toro was um, this song 
in the Breakfast Monkey animatic called Cruising for Crazy. <laughs> you know, that was actually the first thing we worked on together. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it was cool. And, and so, um, you, you know, just the way you like to, you, you like to have an idea, then you bring in collaborators yeah, yeah. Um, to bring it to life, like you had with all these other things, and now like you're like, I have these songs, and we're, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm assuming they were just you and a guitar, like with a tape recorder, kind of putting them together, or did you? I can't even remember if it was, yeah, probably a tape recorder, and then like, Ray really, and then we started collaborating on songs together, yeah. um, just in a, we would rent a rehearsal space and just yes. go in there. Um, and then Ray really helped me transpose those ideas that I would have into something that made sense. Yes. You know, he was such a good guitar player, he was able to, sometimes I was able to just sing stuff to him and he would play it but make it a lot cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so even like singing like, 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 like a, a riff that goes like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If I couldn't play it on the guitar, I would sing it to him. And then he, and that, that kind of is how I would sit in his room with him, and that's how we generated the sound of the band. Yeah. We would sit together, and sometimes I'd have a guitar, sometimes not. And then Ray had his own ideas. Yeah. He was really like, he was a really, um, he, was, he learned how to play through listening to metal records. Yeah. So he would play along in Metallica records and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Pan Pantera records. And that's, yeah, yeah. that's how he, respect. That's how, yeah, that's how he figured it out. Um, so he would help get this stuff out of me, and then that formed the sound. We were like, we were trying to take bits of everything we love, like, or it'll be like kind of driving and fast, like punk, but then it'll have metal and, yeah. you know, the lyrics will be like storyteller lyrics. Like, I was really inspired so by All the me. little things that you've been working on. Yeah, all the little well, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like, I really liked um, Nick Cave, and uh, he was a storyteller, and there wasn't yeah. a lot of storytelling happening in rock or music at the time. It was very much like about relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially uh, like that area, you know, Jersey, you know, uh, melodic hardcore, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Lifetime and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. about like these kind of relationships, but nobody was doing really conceptual stuff or telling stories. So yeah, like, and I think yeah. that was a result of like a pop punk just kind of being like, it's like everyone kind of just started singing about high school almost, like, like old 50s was. music. Yeah, pop punk was about the high school experience, boyfriend, girlfriend stuff, yeah. you know. But the, because of you had this fantastical mind, you were, tr you, were you could, you know, do similar epic t storytelling. Yeah, I you. wanted to build worlds with music, yeah. you know, and that's what we started to do together. and bringing in like gothic elements or bringing yeah. in things like vampires and building this kind of thing and and there was always a momentum in my chemical romance we would um it just like we'd have our first practice and the song worked the second practice we'd have a new song the third practice we have mikey on bass the fourth practice we just it, it, every week there was a new thing that happened yeah and then eventually frank joined the band and then um um, and we never stopped. It was like, oh, we have a show. Oh, then we have another show. Oh, now we're opening up for Jimmy World. Oh, it was like every wow, so have about quick. Yeah, it yeah, really fast. There was a yeah. real momentum to it. And so with Mr. Science Theater, where you like you do your you do the show, and then it takes you a while to get you know done with the adrenaline, and then you sleep terribly on a bus. Yeah, yeah. That's you, what once happens. the bus stops, you sleep throughout the day, just trying to recover from the night yeah. before. And you you think you're going to get other stuff done, and you don't. Well, I try to. I figured out how to like kind of game the system. So, like, I would uh, obviously I'd be just like you, full of adrenaline at night. I'd be up for a little while, but then luckily I'd still wake up at about ten. Okay. And then I had all this time until sound check. Um, <clears throat> and uh, your brain it, wasn't mush from just feeling no like, tired. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. You know, and I think a lot of it is because even though I used a lot of creativity in my camp romance, it was still like a therapy. Yeah. So I had this other creative itch I wanted to scratch. Yeah. So I wake up and I really missed comics. Um, and I was on Taste of Chaos. Um, and uh, I got a bunch of markers and stuff. And I would literally set up in the dressing room, and I started creating the Umbrella Academy that way. So that happened within, like, you just started coming up with this while the band was going on. And it was, was there something inside you kind of going like, it's like, I, I don't know, can I do both of these things at the same time or am I going to have to choose? The only thing I had to get rid of in my life was Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> I literally quit Warcraft to write Umbrella Academy. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> the choice, yeah, exactly. And Warcraft's cool, but I wanted to be a little more proactive. Yeah. Um, and I was like, the longer you play that game, it just gets harder and harder. And yeah. I think I was um, <clears throat> killing plants in the jungle and <laughs> <laughs> something like broke inside me and died inside me. I was yeah. like, I'm not gonna play this anymore. Yeah. Because I've been doing it for like nine hours. Yeah, you could have got something done in that time. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with like disconnecting. No, that's it's healthy to have that. Yes, yeah, for sure. But being creative is my way to kind of disconnect and to really disconnect I read that's my favorite thing okay it yeah. chills me out at night it's I do it every night before yeah. bed um, and you know so then you do umbrella comedy it gets it's a huge hit you win awards it gets turned into a show you're working on another show like it's a uh, and and you you know you still doing music, so now you're kind of like you're you're in that sweet spot where you're you're able to kind of is that something that came with age is how to not exhaust yourself with with all your creative endeavors. Yeah, um, no, it becomes really important to to understand that you do have a limit to how much creativity you have in a certain you have a bandwidth basically. Yes, it's not yeah. so much a limit. Your creativity could be limitless, but per day you're only able to get out so much mm -hmm. until you have to recharge, go to sleep, read a book, yeah. you know, uh, do something like that, you know, and then, then the next day you're fresh again and you could get more out of you. But it's, I try to be careful about taking too many projects because I only have a certain amount of bandwidth. You know? Yeah, art can overwhelm you. As we wrap up here, what are, uh, what's the kind of, to people who, a lot of people hear this, like, you know, cons are great because it's like, it's like a ton of creative people all in a, in, in, in this place, and I'm sure they have different interests, and they feel that they have to choose. Yeah, I was told that when I was like when I was like playing in bands, but I wanted to do comedy. I was told that a lot. Yeah, that I, I was had told to that. choose. And here's what I'll say about that: I actually do feel you need to focus on one. Mm -hmm. You could you could come to something else later, but sometimes you do need to hop around when you're trying to find out what the thing is. Yeah, like you know. Um, but I think focusing on one getting that finished to a certain point where, they, where you can then present it to people or try to get a foot in the door and things like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, then you could kind of move on to the next thing. And each thing you do informs the next thing and you learn from the first thing and then you learn from the second and you just keep going and going and going and you kind of build up your own momentum. Yes, you know? awesome. Well, uh, Gerard Way, everybody, thanks so much for coming. Thank you guys. It's a testament to creativity on Bible.